In today's video, I am taking some beautiful but surprisingly easy macro photos using these absolutely gorgeous sunflowers. These flowers are absolutely stunning. The great thing is, is that they are packed with different textures. We've got the lovely yellow petals. We've got all the textures on the seeds in the middle of the flower. Then around the outside, we've got all these greens and all these different spiky little leaves. So from a macro perspective, there is a lot of different things going on here. And these are just sunflowers that we got from the supermarket. So this is a dead simple setup that any of you can try at home. But I will just start off by taking you through the kit that I've got set up so far. Of course, my camera is my Canon R5 and I've got my 100mm macro on here. I've got it secured on a tripod and that is both because I'm shooting this video and I just find that it makes it much easier for me to show what I'm doing, but also I'm going to be working with quite narrow apertures and I'm using continuous light, so I'm probably going to be using quite slow shutter speeds as well, so hand-holding really isn't going to give the best results here. And if you're at home, it's dead easy just to get that tripod out and keep it static. You're not having to haul it across fields or up hills to get the shots that you want. And above, you probably noticed that I've got a big LED light here. Now, to be honest, for these kinds of shots, I would rather use flash, whether that is a flash gun like this that you would normally have on top of camera or something like a Godox AD200 that you can handhold and move around. But I'm using continuous light here largely just because I'm also making this video and having a video light just makes my life easier. But whatever light you're using, whether that's a flash gun, whether it's a big LED like this, whether it's a small LED light panel, you'll be able to get some really cool looking shots with a setup like this. Anyway, enough of me rambling, let's actually get on and take some photos. Now I don't have exact shots in mind, so what I'm really planning on doing is just sort of moving the flowers around in their vase, moving my camera around on the tripod um, and just seeing kind of what some of the different details look like when I start to actually look at them through the macro lens. Because like anything, it takes on a completely different life once you start getting up close. From a distance, you notice the lovely colors, the yellows, the browns and the greens. And then once you really get up close, that's when you start to see all the different textures. And that's when different compositions might start to jump out at you. So turning my camera on, I'm going to be using live view. And I'm basically just going to start moving the camera around. I'm manually focusing on different areas and just kind of seeing what looks good. It may be that I move around a little bit. But what I'm trying to do at the moment is find a nice shot that brings in both the yellow petals around the edge of the flower and also some of these lovely brown uh, bits in the middle. I want to kind of shoot basically top down on this flower here. So I'm going to raise my camera up on the central column of the tripod, something like this. And this is the first shot that I'm looking at getting. I really like that we've got the yellow petals on the left side of the frame, and then it will move down towards the uh, seeds and stamen um, in the middle of the flower. Now, at the moment, I've got this at f18 and 0.4 seconds. And if I just take that shot, you can kind of get an idea of what this shot is going to look like. But even at f18, I'm not going to get enough in focus, even if I try sort of focusing more towards the middle of those petals, taking that shot again. We've still got, uh, you know, areas of the petals here in focus, but then uh, over here is not in focus. So what I'm going to do is do a focus stack here, focusing at different points, going all the way along and including this middle bit, and then we can blend those together in post. Now this camera does have an auto focus stacking function, but I'm not going to use that today, just in case not everybody has got one. Um, but I'm going to shoot this at F9, and that's going to give me a shutter speed of an eighth of a second. If I just do a quick test, I think that looks really, really nice. So I'm going to start by taking a quick shot with my hand in front of the lens. That way, when I look back at these images in Lightroom, I can see exactly where my focus stack begins. And I'm going to start by focusing right on the very tips of those petals closest to the camera and then take my shot. And then I'm going to zoom back in 
and move that focus point slightly further down. Take my shot. And I'm basically going to repeat this process right until I focused on the point furthest away. I'm happy with how this looks. I think it's quite a nice composition. I could certainly have refined it. I'm not sure I'm exactly shooting down um, from the top and maybe I could have played around with finding some uh, different petals to have in the foreground. But overall, um, I'm actually really pleased with how this looks. But before I move my camera too far away, I'm gonna try and take a similar shot in a similar part of the, of the flower, but in vertical orientation. Reason being is this side of the flower is sort of already in a vertical composition when I'm in this close. All of the detail is really kind of going around and down like that. So it kind of makes a little bit more sense to shoot this, filling that vertical frame with all these different parts of the flower. So what I'm trying to get here is this lovely crescent of the middle of the flower coming around from the top right hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. So I think I'm just gonna refine this just a little bit because we've also got this little gap in the petal here. So it may be that I just need to slightly tweak the way that this is angled um, just so that it's nice and uniform the whole way around. But once I've got that, I think we're gonna be onto a nice shot. But one thing I haven't mentioned is the positioning of this light. So at the moment I've got it coming right down from the top and for a lot of shots, I think that's gonna work well. Reason is, is because as it comes down, it's sort of catching on some of these petals on the top, but causing shadows underneath others. As a result, we're getting some really nice shadow and contrast and definition to all the different petals in the flower. And that's really important. If you just fire light forwards at them, you lose all that shadow. And as a result, you lose a lot of that shape and form. But it's good practice when you're using any kind of lighting to actually move it around your subject, particularly if you're using continuous light, it's very easy to move it and see in real time exactly what effect it's gonna have on your subject. It may be that as you move it off to the side and that light is coming in from a different direction, it's causing shadows and light in completely different ways. And you might find it results in a much better looking shot. Which arguably is a little difficult to do with this when I've got it up here on a big weighted stand, but I'm gonna do my best. But for now, I'm gonna take this shot because I actually think the way that the light uh, is hitting this right now looks really good, or does it? I can just sort of move it around a bit. Other thing to note is that this is one of two lights I've got on right now. This one is mostly being used for the flowers themselves, but then I've got another one off that way, which is lighting me up, which I should not stare directly into. And again, that's just to help me film this video, but um, I'm gonna experiment with turning it off because we've got a light coming in from this side and then a light coming in from that side. And so that is going to end up killing some of those shadows that I'm trying to create. But I have moved this light off to one side. I'm just gonna take a quick test shot and see what that looks like. It's okay, but I think I can do a little better. I'm just gonna cast a bit more light onto the center and then I'm gonna turn this off. Also close my window. So now I am in darkness, but hopefully this will be much better for our photos. The position I've put the light is uh, a little bit sort of um, above and behind uh, the flower. And I just think it's, it's catching the, the um, sort of ruffles of the petals in a really nice way. What I do need to be very careful of though, when I'm using quite slow shutter speeds, is that any movement I make starts to wobble the flowers just a tiny bit, but it is enough that it will make my images look quite fuzzy. So I'm gonna be very careful, but as before, I'm going to take multiple shots at different exposure, uh, different focus points, and then we're gonna blend those together later on. So I'm gonna start up here on the top, take my shot, and then just keep on turning that focus wheel, taking subsequent shots, and eventually, hopefully get a lovely sharp image. Quite different this time, and I just happened to stumble on this as I was moving my camera around, but really like this view of these petals here with these other ones that have all fallen to out of focus. So I kind of want to emphasize that. So I don't want to focus stack this, and I don't want to use a really narrow aperture. And I've actually found that f for 50th of a second works really well. So I've manually focused on these tips here. Take my shot. 
be honest, it's been a real joy trying to actually find the photos in here because just everywhere you kind of point the camera and then refocus, there's another sort of interesting composition. Maybe it's a particular close-up on a, on a petal like this, which I really like. You know, not all of these are the most fascinating or incredible of photos, but I just think they're really nice. And if you really spend the time in kind of sort of narrowing your view, you start to find some quite abstract shots that's not just a photo of the flowers from a distance, just a bouquet on a table, but you get some really, really interesting things going on. The other thing I'm hoping for as well is that as these start to wilt and, and get towards the end of their typically beautiful life, then um, they may even start to present more opportunities as they start to crinkle up and go dry. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not planning on throwing these out as soon as, um, as soon as I'm done with them here. I like that. I'm just going to back my camera up a little bit. We've got the uh, the heart of the flower down here, and we've got the light coming through these petals, really lighting them up. I really love this gap here, which is this one that's sort of a little bit withered. Um, I just think it gives some interesting, uh, so not suppose subject matter, but if this was just entirely uniform, I think it might look a little bit boring. But because we've got uniform petals here and then the break, I just think it's got a little bit more going on. So F8, 15 for a second. I'm quite happy so far with some of the shots that I've been getting of the front of the flowers, but around the sides we've got all of these really cool sort of spiky green bits that are sort of encasing um, the actual yellow petals. And so I'm going to just spin everything round and see if I can find some more interesting compositions that really use um, some of those greens. Because I also just love that colour balance, that yellow against the green, and there's two very different sets of textures, the smooth uh, yellow petals, and then the very, very spiky, quite harsh greens. So there's some great contrast there. There's a nice little view in here. So I think if I get my camera in, I'm going to look at a... Uh, well, it would sort of be horizontal composition, depends on which way we sort of look at it. But I think this is quite nice. And there's also like a little bead of some kind of liquid on there, which um, I want to try and I want to try and capture. Actually, I think popping it down on the table is going to be the best way here. I'll just bring my tripod down and swing this round. So this is the scene I'm looking at. I really like that we've got this sort of crescent of green spikiness with all these lovely tiny um almost hairs on them and then we've got that crown of yellow which i just think looks really really nice um like the other ones i'm going to do a focus stack here because the uh tips of the of the green part are actually much closer to the lens than the um uh, than the petals so i'm not convinced i'm going to get everything uh nice and sharp in one image so i'm going to do a focus stack going through the scene and that's going to get me a much sharper shot while i've just been filming one of these uh leaves has come off and actually as i looked through it at the light all of the really cool like veins and things in the leaf um, really stood out. So I just thought for my last photo, I'm just going to put it in this clamp so that I can hold it up against the light and shoot through the leaf, capturing the light coming through, letting all those veins really stand out. Just pop the leaf in like that. Okay, I want to get a little a little higher. So I've really kind of filled it, uh, filled the whole frame with the leaf. We've got the main stem coming down the uh, the right side of the frame here. And so we've got all these arms coming off, loads of great detail. Um, I'm still gonna have to focus stack this because there's so much movement uh, in the leaf itself. So again, I'm gonna start at the closest point, take my shot and then move the way through the image, changing that focus as I go.
Well, I think that brings me to the end of today's video, but if you've enjoyed watching the video, then I definitely recommend giving it a go yourself because it's so easy to do. You can pick flowers up like this from almost anywhere and different types of flowers will have different sort of subject matter that you can try and photograph. So pop into a florist and try and look close up at some of the things that they've got there and see if any of them stand out from a macro perspective. Then bring them home, put a light on top and see what shots you can get. Couldn't be more simple and it is a really, really good fun one to try. And another great way of sharpening up those macro skills, those focus stacking skills maybe at home so that when you get out into the field and time is against you, you know exactly how to get the shots you want. But if you have enjoyed this video, then do please hit that like button and do please consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.